Unfortunately, there are not very many inexpensive large aperture lenses designed specifically for the Micro Four Thirds format right now. Therefore, we have to look towards legacy manual focused lenses for low light photos and videos with Micro Four Thirds cameras. This video will attempt to show how some of the older manual focused lenses from other manufacturers can be a great option if you are on a tight budget and you are willing to do the focusing yourself for both pictures and videos. Using manual focus for videos is actually easier than autofocusing in most situations. If you are not panning and zooming, then you can usually just set the focus and then make very slight adjustments if the subject moves. Taking pictures with manual focus lenses can be done as well. You just have to be patient and use the focus zooming that some Micro Four Thirds cameras offer. If you know the particular make or type of lens that you are interested in, then you can just click on it in the next few slides and it will take you directly to it. If you just want to see what options are out there, then continue to let the video play. Zoom lenses. C-mount closed circuit TV lenses. Nikon wide and mid-range lenses. Canon mid-range FD lenses. Konica mid-range lenses. Super zoom and telephoto lenses. The first set of lenses I want to show are some zoom lenses. Ideally we'd like to have a fast zoom lens with silent and smooth autofocus. However that lens does not exist for Micro Four Thirds currently. The Panasonic 14mm to 45mm Micro Four Thirds zoom lens offers a mix of wide angle and mid-range focal lengths. However, it has a painfully slow f5.6 aperture near its telephoto end. It is also extremely hard to zoom smoothly with this particular lens. The lens is extremely sharp and perfect for outdoor shots. However, I have found that it simply cannot shoot adequate pictures or movies indoors. Most people think that the built-in image stabilization in the Panasonic zoom lenses will make up for their narrow apertures in low light situations. That simply is not the case with moving subjects. Image stabilization does nothing if the subject moves or turns. Even the slightest head turn or hand movement will be blurred if a shutter speed is not fast enough. The best way to shorten the shutter duration is to use a wide aperture lens. Unfortunately, all of the current Micro Four Thirds zoom lenses are f3.5 or narrower. That simply will not allow you to shoot with a fast enough shutter speed indoors. I also use an old Canon FD 35mm to 70mm f2.8 to f4.0 lens that I bought used for about $35. It is not nearly as sharp as more modern lenses, but a slightly larger aperture does help a bit in some low light situations. However, I really have not found a good wide aperture zoom option for Micro Four Thirds cameras yet. If you know of a relatively inexpensive larger aperture lens that offers full coverage on a Micro Four Thirds sensor, then please post a comment about it. I would gladly get rid of most of my other lenses if there was just a Micro Four Thirds version of the Olympus 35mm to 100mm f2.0 lens. I have also tried some C-mount lenses from legacy closed circuit TV cameras. These lenses do not cover the entire Micro Four Thirds sensor, so you get a peephole effect with them. You can crop the center of the picture to eliminate this effect if you do not desire it. The C-mount lenses are extremely small and typically have unbelievably large apertures. Generally, the wide-angle ones do not cover enough of the sensor to use them as true wide-angle lenses. However, the 17mm to 102mm f2.1 Sony zoom lens that I have is terrific at the telephoto end. It produces unusual bokeh when it is wide open, but it only needs to be stopped down a bit to get some very nice effects with it. I typically shoot in black and white with no sharpening to give the pictures and videos an old time look. I have purchased a few other C-mount lenses that I never used like the 12.5mm f1.0, the 25mm f1.4, and the 18mm to 48mm zoom. All these lenses can work in some situations, however they are hard to focus because of their very limited focus ranges. I have so many other lenses that cover their focal ranges that I just never use these particular C-mount lenses. If you're going to invest in C-mount lenses, then make sure you understand what you are getting. These lenses are not going to be the ideal situation for everything. You can get outstanding results with them in the right situations, but they don't work in every situation. 
Don't spend more than about $40 on any C-mount lens. You probably won't be satisfied with the lens if you spend any more than that. The next set of lenses I will discuss are all mid-focal length Canon lenses. Right now I use the Canon 55mm f1.2 SSC lens for most of my portrait shots. Canon refers to it as super spectra coating lens, which they claim helps to achieve optimal color balance. On a micro four thirds camera, this lens shoots like a 110mm f2.4 lens would on a full frame camera. It gives an extremely shallow depth of field with my Panasonic GF1. However, it is slightly soft wide open at f1.2. Between f1.4 and f1.8, the lens sharpens up considerably and is probably one of my sharpest lenses by f2.0. It costs about $200 to $300 used on eBay, which is a great deal when you compare it to other f1.2 lenses that typically cost between $500 and $1,000. The other Canon FD lens I have is the 50mm f1.4 SSC. It typically sells for between $42 and $50 used on eBay. However, the quality of it on this lens can vary greatly depending on its age and whether the previous owner took care of it or not. My particular example has a lot of issues like broken aperture blades, dust, fungus, and delamination. You can see these issues as you examine the glass and the inside of the lens. If you're going to purchase this lens, then I recommend spending a few extra dollars to get one where the seller guarantees it is in perfect working condition. In excellent condition, this lens can take great images for under $50. It is known as probably the best bargain in legacy lenses. The next lenses I will discuss are all Nikon mount lenses. The first lens is a relatively wide angle Sigma DX 30mm f1.4 lens. It typically sells for about $400 new and around $280 used. It can autofocus on Nikon DX cameras or be used in manual focus mode on micro four thirds cameras. My particular lens was used and it was dropped so the autofocus mechanism no longer works even with Nikon cameras. However, it is perfect for my needs since I can't use the autofocus with my camera anyway and I was able to get it for under $200. The main concern with Nikon DX lenses like the Sigma 30mm f1.4 is that they do not have an aperture ring. However, you can buy a micro four thirds to Nikon adapter that has a manual and stepless aperture control that will work with all Nikon lenses. The adapters typically sell for about $50. The stepless aperture control is excellent for shooting videos because it eliminates the drastic contrast change that happens when the aperture is adjusted a full f-stop. You can also get the stepless adapters for Canon FD lenses for around $40. The other Nikon lens I use often is the 50mm f1.8 pancake lens. It is an extremely small and lightweight lens like the Panasonic 20mm f1.7 pancake lens, but it has more than twice the focal length. You can easily find good examples of this lens on eBay for $35 to $40. If I could only have two lenses with me, I'd probably choose the 20mm pancake and this Nikon 50mm pancake. With those lenses, you can shoot just about any close range indoor shot you encounter. The next lenses are all Konica lenses. The Konica 40mm f1.8 is about $30, and the 57mm f1.4 is about $60. Both are fantastic lenses, however the Micro Four Thirds to Konica adapter has some inherent flaws in it. The relatively cheap $35 adapter I use does not lock onto the lens properly. Therefore my lenses are loose and when I try to turn the tight focusing ring on the 57mm lens it will spin off the adapter. The 40mm lens I have has a nice smooth focus ring so I can use it with the adapter. However, I haven't used the 57mm because it is too hard to manually focus due to the broken focus ring. If you get a Konica lens, then just make sure the focus ring and the aperture blades operate smooth.